Okay, I'm sharing the screen. I'll switch off my video as well so that I could write. So this is referred to as nuclear magnetic resonance imaging. Let's go through one by one here. So uh, I'm pretty sure you are, some of you could guess why we won't see this nuclear word anymore in MRI. Okay, this to be in this way, I could write it as NMRI, but you won't see these days this word nuclear anymore. Any guess why? Or that we will come a little later perhaps. So what does this word nuclear mean here? Sir, maybe it's uh, like since it's nuclear magnetic, so something to do with the magnetic properties of atoms or uh, the nuclear. Yes, that's right. It is something to do with just the nucleus. You you would be always dealing with the protons here, which are essentially are there in your nucleus. And uh, how many protons should be there uh, for this phenomena to happen? This I'm sure some of you who have at least skimmed through the presentation uh the video or my notes should be able to tell how many protons are required for getting this phenomena um, odd mm, but, yeah odd number of protons you require see this nuclear comes from this is the property of a proton which is sitting in the nucleus so that is from where the nuclear comes okay and then people started interpreting it to some nuclear radiation and other things which you have in other modalities. There is absolutely no radiation here, okay? And when it comes to MRA, there is absolutely no radiation here. Why is there no radiation? What is the kind of uh, signal used here? Radio waves. Electro yeah, that's right, radio waves. So from radio waves, these are low energy waves, right? Had it been some X-rays, gamma rays, you would be having some nuclear radiation effect. But this has nothing to do with the nuclear radiation effect at all. So this is something to do with the nucleus and its properties. So what is that uh, property that's uh, first thing discussed there in the uh, like notes I have given you? The first property that we have is nuclear magnetic resonance. What does this tell you? Nuclear magnetic resonance phenomena. What does this mean? Before that, maybe, so for example, it is not necessary that you use nuclear magnetic resonance for capturing an image. There is something, it started with NMR spectroscopy to begin with. This is where it has its roots. Where, for example, you have a chemical uh, material for which you would like to figure out the properties of it, then you could use this nuclear magnetic resonance phenomena to find out, given a composition, what are the atoms that has, what is the chemical composition of this molecule. To do that, still they use it. This is a very, very uh, means fundamental thing that the uh, chemistry people require, which is referred to as NMR spectroscopy which would be based on the analysis of the spectrum that you would be getting by modifying certain things, okay? From that, you would be inferring what are all chemical components are there. And this is again an upgraded version, you could call it amazing, where you would make the uh, resonance, bring resonance and excitation in, you control that to have in certain particular regions and then figure out or get the image out of it, okay? That's a very roughly uh, what it means by nuclear magnetic resonance imaging. So now let's come back to the very basic NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance phenomena. For example, when you have odd number of proton, there is always a single one which is free, okay? It's not yet coupled. So this, this guy is still free, okay? So what would happen is, among the properties of a proton, it has a, what are all properties? You could say it has a charge, okay? And uh, for example, it has a mass. You all know that. Along with it, it also has another property. It spins, right? The proton spins. And that spinning, it spins in its own orientation. When there is no external force uh, operating on it, this would be spinning in its own direction, okay? And as it is spinning, this would result in angular momentum. To be more precise, you call it as spin angular momentum. And this momentum 
pay attention here this is a vector quantity this is not a scalar quantity that momentum is a vector which has you could say that momentum it's a, it's because it is rotating in a three dimensional space you could think of okay so that when you are uh, representing it you would be representing that as a vector and uh, this i don't know how to call this but uh, i am calling this as h bar itself as if i am calling this uh, this is the commonly people are using it so i'm still using the same uh, symbol here h bar times i bar again pay attention here this i bar is referred to as spin quantum number so it depends on which is the uh, atom that you are looking at so again pay attention here we are discussing things at atomic level okay so these are all atomic properties and to get the full understanding of it one should go into quantum physics okay but that's beyond our scope so the explanation would be based on the uh, a combination of both you take certain things there and then classical mechanics you would be using with whichever we are comfortable with otherwise the way we show the atom spinning itself doesn't make sense if you go into quantum mechanics so this is what the property you have and this quantum number depends on the type of atom you have say for example one of the main candidate for this is hydrogen 1 and uh, similarly there are other things also for example carbon 13 so this is not very common you see c12 i think right but if you have a carbon uh, which is there with 13 that's also is a candidate that we would be discussing similarly there are uh, other things also let's say phosphorus phosphorus 31 okay then sodium 23 you notice here all of them have odd numbers there okay so once it is rotating this acts as a dipole there dipole is nothing but this when a this is a charged one rotating okay this is so it acts as a tiny magnet is it not so that in order to say what would be the magnetic dipole moment this usually you represent it with again pay attention here this dipole moment is a vector quantity that's very important this mu bar will be equal to gamma times s bar okay this this dipole moment comes from angular momentum that it is with which it is rotating and this i think this is called as gyro magnetic ratio this again is dependent on type of the atom that you are looking at this is referred to as gyro magnetic ratio so this i could then write gamma into h bar into i cap so hopefully you could sense here why we are when this turns out to be the main one of the important candidates for this nuclear magnetic resonance phenomena that we will be shortly seeing the candidate being hydrogen okay we are interested in magnetic resonance imaging of the humans are animals are any live, uh, living organs it is very uh, very appropriate to have this can you guess why why hydrogen atom this being a main candidate for this phenomena which we have not yet discussed right that we are going to shortly discuss okay why we are interested then in this in this phenomena the main candidate being hydrogen is it like we have any hydrogen uh, atoms in our body do you think so water h2 that's right so 760 to 70% of our body has water right so that's h2o is there so you have billions and billions of hydrogen atoms within our body okay this is the investment okay for getting this amazing so this is something that triggers or that that plays with this hydrogen atoms and that's why this is very so the source that which responds to this mr phenomena is hydrogen largely okay and that is there in a abundance in our body and uh, that's what is of interest for us here now this is the magnetic dipole moment it is nothing but it is telling you each atom is a kind of a tiny magnet rotating on its own axis 
and then act having its own magnetic field now if you take a small sample of let's say hydrogen or you could think of it as in terms of imaging you could consider it as a sample in case of the chemical composition you want to see or in case of any image you could also think it as volume element oxel okay there are millions and millions of uh, if you take oxel of mm space okay of mm size you have millions of hydrogen uh, atoms there okay however there is no order here each one would be rotating in its own direction okay on its own axis and if you look at the whole magnetic field which you could consider it as mu bar of each suppose you have all of those uh, different uh, atoms all atoms put together within a oak cell if you look at this would be most of the times would be equal to zero so at microscopic level if you look at there is magnetism but the moment you are looking at a macroscopic level uh, this is like uh, each one in a class might be singing their own song okay but at a microscopic level each song has a meaning and it, it is a song but the moment in a class every student is singing the song that he likes in his own tune okay in his own beat in his own pace then at a macroscopic level at the class level it, it is not going to make any sense there right so the net magnetic field at a macroscopic level by macroscopic level here i mean at a oxel level this is going to be zero now can we somehow make it better than this how can you bring order here this class in the classroom each guy is doing his own business here each is doing something okay but the net result is zero so what can we do here pass the magnetic field right apply a very strong magnetic field so let a strict te teacher come into the class okay then things could come into order so what is done here now is you apply a very strong magnetic field this is what you would be doing let's call this as a strong magnetic field of b not then what do you think will happen will all come in the direction of b not yes sir mm. uh, so everybody is with me eh? everybody will say that all will come in the direction of b not i think at least sai pavan would contradict with this maybe in the opposite not. direction sir that's right that's not so intuitive when you look at in terms of class example is a bad example here but somehow we could uh, make that example also uh, work here see in a class these are the guys who say that i want a class okay there could be always the other guys who who would say i don't want the class as well okay so you could think of that in that manner here so there will be two groups now but the nice thing here is there is a polarization here okay this word is a very appropriate word here if you think about its meaning now the decisions are polarized okay all one 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 group of people wants to sing a particular song other group wants to sing another particular song it's not like everybody wants to sing their own song now so approximately half of the whole number of atoms total number of atoms would be aligning with b not and the other half would be anti so half of them would be parallel to b not and another half approximately would be anti parallel to b not so a very small fraction of more atoms would prefer aligning in the direction of b not than the ones which are there in anti parallel to b not okay this is the force applied but they rotated two spins which again would go to uh, the quantum mechanics part they cannot and anyway because of that it could come in anti parallel also as i said okay suppose th this is a very wrong uh, picture but still okay you you think that there are five guys in that other direction four guys in that direction so would you like to see how many will be there suppose if i consider 2 million hydrogen atoms ideally in this direction 1 million right in parallel 
in another direction one million should be there but can you guess how many more would be there in this direction actually in anti parallel state let's call it as n minus 1 and plus just i want to see the difference of those which are there parallel i am saying there will be more minus that which are there anti parallel any guess out of 2 millions how many would be there just 7 you will be surprised too means i am surprised at least and the whole acquisition of beat uh, nmr spectroscopy or mr magnetic resonance imaging the whole thing is based on these seven candidates so their response okay where depending on if you give an external uh, create an external resonance field and give them extra energy what is going to happen that's exact that's all based on out of 2 millions whole thing is based on roughly these seven guys which is very interesting we have the hydrogen in our body so abundantly and in a given mm there are so many millions and millions of uh, atoms of hydrogen that this number of 7 out of 2 million is good enough to acquire any mass so what is the reason behind this 7 being in opposite direction uh that again comes from the theory of probability it tells so that would be given if you have noticed uh, if you have gone through the notes just i i wanted to avoid uh, uh, going into too many equations this comes from the probability theory there is something called as a boltzmann distribution which tells you the ratio of those which are anti parallel to the parallel is given by an exponential this again uh, is not a uh, not a golden number or a, a fixed number this in fact is equivalent to e power minus delta e by k times t okay k being boltzmann constant t being the temperature this number could be in fact improved there by reducing the temperature but there is a limit on which you could apply this temperature the energy would be in fact equivalent to mu dot product of this with the applied magnetic field okay so the energy has to do with both the magnetic field uh, that you are applying there and the uh, dipole moment that you have for each of them so that's so this mu would be in fact the summation of all mu with b bar would give you and as we to your question so there is a limit this energy field you could see for a given hydrogen atom let's say you don't have much control over what should be the uh, what should be the mu value uh, mu value here okay this depend this, this you don't have a control b not there is a limit to what high magnetic field you could apply so these are the ones that put a constraint on how many uh, atoms are there in addition in parallel state than compared to the anti parallel state is that fine okay sir yeah right so assume that you have some guys in this orientation okay another guys in this orientation then you want to turn suppose you could turn these guys into other direction by doing something we should bring some additional incentives to these guys okay you are offer him a pizza so that he also says that we don't want a class okay basically these are all in resonance this which are in parallel are in fact so i play assume that this is the direction i am purposefully not writing the equation at this point we will do it shortly anyways that's the uh, just i before that i would want you to get a feel of it okay so this is actually a low energy state see if you want to agree with uh, whatever your teacher says you don't really require much of an energy it is to oppose what your master or what your teacher says to oppose it you need some more energy is it not because you need to justify it and you need to uh, like go through some fight there and the other hand these guys have high energy so the, these are really they are convinced of what they are doing and uh, they are prepared for the kind of whatever is the outcome now in order to bring them here you need to give them some energy booster what do you think is that energy booster that you could give them so that they will switch here that is to rf pulse radio frequency signal you give which is exactly the resonance frequency here so that all the quantum physics 
things will come and it will absorb the packets and then that guy would change the party now okay initially he is uh, uh, with the teacher now he got the extra energy booster so now he could say whatever he really wants not by polarized by what the student but he is still polarized but now in the opposite direction okay you got a, you, you have give him a kick and he just stood up now but then they you withdraw your rf signal now okay there is no more this rf signal so then what would happen this guy would again go back this is not inherent to him okay he doesn't have the conviction or to stand with his decision it's just that his uh, his fellow friend has pushed him uh, to go against what has been said there and come into his party but this additional push you have given is a very small thing then what would happen this guy would again once you withdraw once you stop giving this rf signal then he would decide whether uh, well why to have a fight with the, this guy unnecessarily he might screw up me in the exams so let me say whatever he say let me say yes sir yes sir okay this is the he, that is his natural tendency so he don't want any fight he is a very comfortable with just saying everything obediently yes so what this guy will do now he would come again back to this parallel state which is a low energy state when he comes there in order to come there now when he is coming what could happen now can he just come there so he has to leave some of his energy to come to the state and that again that is what signal that you are going to capture there okay so earlier you have rf transmitter that same energy signal he would shed it now in order to go into a state which is pretty comfortable in line with what his master says and then you have an rf receiver where you would be able to sense this signal now the interesting thing again is not all students when you give him a kick to your friend and then not all students would immediately withdraw after you withdraw your external force on him each one will have their own character some some people will hold to their stand in the opposite direction for quite long and others would uh, immediately the moment the external force is removed they immediately will change their party back to a very comfortable state and it is actually the molecular structure and the nature of the the density of uh, atoms that you have in a particular region okay this is just uh, this could be like uh, is more complicated than what we, the way we are discussing it but i think at least you will get a feel for it that's fine so each for example you have a bone uh, for example in your uh, uh, imaging you are imaging the head part the bone the density is different those molecules to release this energy and go back the time would be different than for example some cerebrospinal fluid is there that fluid would uh, respond differently white matter is there white matter would respond differently okay gray matter is there gray matter would respond differently to it and that is how you would know what is the structure or what is the nature of the molecular structure at a given point at which you are probing hope you are able to follow with the kind of arguments we are building up and by acquiring it at different points of time you would be able to distinguish then the time it takes to uh, go back to the parallel state or the other way around you will be able to figure out what is the nature of elements that are there okay this is almost like for me i feel like uh, this is an engineering wonder this magnetic resonance imaging so many things at a quantum level and then uh, making a perfect sense of it building uh, the whole image of the uh, various uh, structures of the body and of course the chemical compositions of different molecules and all is uh, it looks like uh, we are just scratching on the surface also here it's even at that level uh, of scratching on the surface itself it looks like a great uh, engineering um, uh, wonder <laughs> yeah any questions so far you are all with b not <laughs>
parallel to bnet nobody wants to have a question at least nobody wants to question the teacher whatever he says the beautiful thing that has been done when it came to imaging is you could spatially manipulate the resonant frequencies of the atoms by applying a small additional magnetic field there so the the energy this is no more a vector okay energy is a dot product of two vectors so which is minus mu bar okay this mu you consider as the sum whole sum of it i guess okay dot b bar now notice here you are applying it in just one direction assume this is your z direction okay so then what you have the minus of the component of this magnetic dipole moment in the z direction multiplied with you are applying a field of b not there okay and minus of what is the magnetic dipole moment that we have just now written above that's equal to let's say gamma times angular momentum you know, magnetic momentum is angular dependent on the angular momentum right gamma into s bar we have written there so into the atomic quantum number times b not you had it so this would be minus gamma into this s bar is what sorry uh, i should have if i am writing just s bar this won't be there and while writing s bar this would be equal to h bar times okay i bar multiplied with b not this i could write it as minus gamma yeah let's put it just this way for the time being and for a hydrogen molecule this is related to again comes from quantum physics if it is for hydrogen you could have two orientations of plus or minus 1 by 2 in the z direction okay this also we would be for this we would be taking iz in fact okay spinning there this would be equal to plus or minus 1 by 2 so in that case for a spin okay this you refer to as a just a spin okay for one spin you are considering here this would be equal to minus gamma bar into h cap by 2 into b not since this could have plus or minus i would write here because this i could take plus or minus 1 by 2 that's what i am substituting here so this is what you have here which means there could be two states here okay which is let's say minus gamma h cap by 2 into b not another is plus gamma by 2 into h h bar into b not okay this is your anti parallel state because that requires more energy this is your parallel state and see the energy emitted by it basically when it is the, something which is there here in the parallel state absorbs energy and then jumps here and then when it cannot hold there any more this will emit the energy okay this here emission of energy would happen here and here absorption would take place here right so this barrier how much energy is required how do you know now delta e will be equal to the difference between these two what is that gamma h times b not so half 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 mi minus of minus of would give you this that's the energy absorbed or uh, that is emitted so now let me write this as h by 2 pi that basically h dash is nothing but h by 2 pi into b not okay this let me write it as h times gamma by 2 pi into b not that's a very very important equation okay and you know you all know e equal to h nu right so it is with this frequency this is going to resonate this is called as larmer frequency this again whole equations uh, the contribution from contributions of larmer it has been interpreted so this is called as larmer frequency f not equal to gamma by 2 pi into b not okay this is the larmer frequency the, uh, so accordingly you need to so to get a feel of how those values would be just take a i i just worked out a table here 
I, I just put means not myself work dot. I have taken it. For example, if you take a hydrogen molecule and you are applying one tesla of field, okay, one tesla of external magnetic field in the z direction, this would be equal to for hydrogen gamma by two pi. This is your Larmor frequency would be equal to forty two point five. Let's say forty two point six megahertz. For when you are, this is the frequency with which it rotates. If you are applying a one tesla field, okay. Suppose if you are applying a three tesla field, what would happen? This is per tesla because this b you have taken to be one. If you are applying three tesla, three times this. That is the frequency with which it resonates. So then, when you are giving an RF pulse and bring something which is in parallel state to anti-parallel state, you should give an RF pulse of, let's say, if you are using one tesla, then you have to give an RF pulse of forty-two point five seven seven megahertz. That is where it absorbs that energy, changes its party to the opposite anti-parallel party. And then, if you withdraw it after a certain time, if it 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 will again on an average, it would again come back. To the original one, then it emits, and then you under study the characteristics of when it is emitted and uh, the behavior of that curve would tell you what is the object that is there at a given point. Let me just uh, also tell you what it exactly means by one tesla. It has some feel for what this number means. Okay, in terms of gas, it is equal to ten thousand gas. So just something that you could imagine is let's say. What is the magnetic field on an average on the surface of the Earth? Earth is a kind of a magnet, so that would be half a gas. It would be there. So if you are saying one tesla, that means ten thousand gas. Means you could say it is. If you take a one tesla, so usually you will have the machines. If you look at it in Tirupati, I think I, I, uh, maybe there is only one three tesla machine. But most of the places uh, you would find out 1.5 tesla machine, which means your magnetic field there uh, of your magnet, okay, is 1.5 tesla. Means you have there 15,000 gas. That means 30,000 times stronger than what our Earth's magnetic field is there. Well, again, we ourselves won't feel the Earth's magnetic field as such. We know from the books it is there, but we don't experience how strong or how weak it is. So maybe another example you could take is very strong refrigerator magnets. Okay, you all put magnets to refrigerators or to put some pictures there or some mementos there. So that roughly, if you have a very strong uh, refrigerator magnet, that would be having hundred gas. That's the usually the maximum one you would be using. So that now should give you the magnetic field that you have, the magnet that you have in an MR image of one point five tesla, is How many times? One fifty times stronger than a normal refrigerator magnet. Okay, that's an extremely strong magnet. And then uh, nowadays, in all good centers, you have three Tesla machines. So three Tesla machine means the strength of that magnetic force is roughly three hundred times the strength of normal refrigerator magnet which we could uh, feel. Okay, that's the kind of magnets you use. And uh, right now, see why do you want to uh, use these magnets? Is because you could see the delta E which you are getting, okay, is dependent on this B. So if it is large, you have a better signal there. This, your signal won't be lost. So that's why, in that aspects, it's good to have a high magnetic field. But it has another uh, issues also difficulties with that. We'll see perhaps later. There is a limit beyond which it becomes uh, very difficult uh, in different ways. Uh, for some other reasons, okay, so you cannot just go on increasing it. But still, seven tesla is the one which, for example, in many high-end research labs for research purposes, where they would keep some, let's say, some animals or some chemical structures. Means we also still could have a scan there. It's as such not hazardous, but uh, still uh, the technology for it is not at. Uh, Completely uh, in place for taking our regular scans, but if but still seven tesla is commonly used as I mentioned here, widely used for research purposes. So there you could think of it is seven times into uh, whatever this seven hundred times stronger than a very strong refrigerator magnet you have it. Okay, so that's the kind of uh, fields that will be there. Okay, I will make just one more point here. 
which we would perhaps discuss in more detail as we move on see you you have some uh, in case of chemistry you just give a sample there and you send these signals here okay rf signals and you figure out you apply a magnetic field here you give it and the whole sample response and here you the same phase, uh, rf uh, transmitter now you switch it off and use it as a receiver now you make it a receiver and you get back the energy signal then the response comes from the whole molecules or uh, sorry the atoms that are there throughout the sample but in case of the imaging we want it from a particular position spatial location is important which is referred to as spatial encoding is very much important so for that in addition to this a very strong external magnetic field that they apply they apply a small gradient magnetic field they call it as gradient uh, coils so there is which changes the resonant frequency now this is something that is going to play with this b not plus there is something which varies with the xyz position okay the moment you have it the resonant frequency is changing now here you give an rf pulse with that when you give a rf pulse of re this resonant frequency only those re in those regions where the resonant frequency is matching they will only respond to it okay it's like in a class you suddenly start speaking in telugu then only those people for the question that is asked in telugu only those who know telugu would respond and suppose suddenly i speak in french only those who know french would be responding same is the case here you have given a resonant frequency here only those atoms that have the same resonant frequency would respond and take this energy go to an anti parallel state you with it right then they come back to the parallel state so then the response you are going to measure you could control by using a gradient magnetic field okay so by this time at the end of all this discussion i hope this point is clear to you that what are the major components of an mri scanner is a high magnetic field okay a high strength magnet is one thing because this is what polarizes your signal right and makes it to rotate at a resonant frequency this is that which you are applying in let's say in one direction of z not then you have gradient coils which would help you in spatial encoding so that you have different resonance frequencies at different spatial locations and then rf transmitter or receiver you transmit it first and then use use the same thing as yes? receiver clear so far any questions so far so the question is why do you need a rf receiver see how do you know a particular uh, which particular object it is there things have moved from uh, parallel state to anti parallel state right and then you stopped applying rf frequency they came came back how do you know how many have come back and what is the characteristic of that you will know only how much time it took again i am talking in terms of very approximate terms uh, so how much time it took to come to its original position okay you would know only by measuring the energy that it is coming out so based on that and at a given uh, also time also plays a vital role at what time okay the, the, this is called as a relaxation time and exit te and tr are there based on that different modalities also you would get you need to measure that otherwise see it's like you have given a signal certain things have changed the party but how many changed party you would know only when you receive when they come back okay you there is unless you unless you measure something you you will get nothing right that's only it is the receiver from which uh, based on which you are constructing the image okay uh, so mm, yes uh, so how do we actually image it uh, from this rf signal so basically how do you correlate this rf signal to the image that's your question yes, right yeah yeah that's again uh, we will go through it in the upcoming classes no uh, this class i just want you to get a feel of what exactly is this nuclear magnetic resonance imaging so uh, simply said I, as i said you could control uh, what is the uh, like uh, from which spatial location you want the response that you can control right using the gradient pulse and then 
you you apply an rf pulse now this would excite some of them to come into an anti parallel state you withdraw that pulse these uh, the and then uh, they would be shedding their uh, anti parallelism and they become parallel to the applied magnetic field they are now emitting the uh, pulse there or energy there in terms of the pulse you measure it and some now you need to figure out how this is related so basically that's where uh, this would be in fact uh, you would realize there based on the equations and the way you are going to acquire it that this acquisition happens in uh, the fourier domain that we will see in the coming classes so because anyway it's all hydrogen right because uh, mm. or yeah. more the most primary element under study is hydrogen only correct correct so how do we distinguish with the frequencies that we have uh, for no uh, can you be more uh, specific so what i was saying is uh, like what i think is the rf frequency for hydrogen and different elements will be different no 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 that's not fully correct see if you had noticed this has something to do with your applied magnetic field look at the larmer's frequency let me share it again so look at here this is your larmer frequency would be equal to gamma by 2 pi into b okay so this is for hydrogen everywhere assume that we are looking at hydrogen only now using a gradient magnetic field on top of this b you are going to modify this and that component you will take something that varies with uh, x y as well as z so now only those hydrogen molecules which are having this particular resonant frequency okay there is something you are transmitting the resonant frequency this transmission will depend on we at which location you want the response from you know for that location you are applying you have a control over the gradient that you are applying there with that you will control from where you would like to see a response and only that rf frequency see in your benches i know first bench people are all speaking hindi second bench marathi third bench gujarati so now if i want people who are speaking gujarati to respond i will talk in them in gujarati okay i will put a question there and i get a response from them alone then similarly you are now controlling the frequencies the resonant frequencies you are controlling based on the spatial locations because this resonant frequency is not just one fixed number this is something depending on the magnetic field that you are applying there which you are controlling over the entire uh, over the entire structure are a sample hmm, is that making sense mm, yes sir good now with this background uh, those of you who have already gone through the video also now go through it it makes uh, uh, a better sense hopefully now and uh, the visualizations are nice there which uh, for me i won't be able to draw they made a nice uh, visualizations of how they would be rotating and all other stuff okay and uh, the book of uh, nishimura is also very nice again you need to there um, yeah it, more rigorously it is there but it's well written book even my uh, material that i have shared with you is based on um, nishimura's textbook as well as there is a professor m krishna naik if you want you could google it uh, he had some uh, i attended one of his uh, courses earlier in ias bangalore uh, after joining here so that's where i uh, i picked uh, some of these things from his notes as well this is largely based on uh, his lectures whatever uh, the notes that i have shared with you is